Hello everybody and welcome back. Useful 3D printed tools for the machine shop part one. The three tools that we're looking at today will help them stay safe, will help them be productive in their projects, and will allow them to check squareness and parallelism. There are links to the full video and links to the STL files in the description below. Squareness comparator and surface gauge. This is what a typical squareness comparator looks like. If you take a look at my design, they're completely different. Here's a quick demonstration on how to use the squareness comparator. Because you want to be at the maximum amount of height when we do our indicating. So I surround a small amount so it's a little easier. I'll rotate that guy into zero position. Now I need to double check to make sure that I have repeatability. So I'm going to move away and I'm going to arc in and get my highest spot. Okay, that looks reasonably good. Now I'm going to rotate my block 180 degrees. Come around and check this side. That looks pretty good. So I know this block is square, but I transform the squareness comparator into a surface gauge. This operation is pretty basic. All you need to do is unscrew the two screws, lift the piece up, turn it around 180 degrees, set it back down, tighten the screws and you're good to go. If you're doing a comparative measurement, grab your gauge block, measure with your gauge block, put your workpiece underneath, and then you measure the difference. Also, watch out for cosine error. Here's an excellent example of a multiple part setup. Basically, you print everything all at once. Here's an example of the inside honeycomb pattern at about 35% fill. On this squareness comparator, I am at about the eighth version but there's still room for improvement. So if you guys think of anything that could improve this or a different model or a different idea, please let me know. Lathe polishing tool. This tool will eliminate the risks associated with polishing on the lathe. Here's what the part looks like fresh off the 3D printer. And this is also what the knobs look like that attach. This print assembles really quickly. The most difficult part is gluing on the rubber pads. They act as a vibration and also as a heat insulator. Here we're loading the sandpaper. And here we're leveling. Here we're doing a demonstration of pull. And here we're doing a demonstration of pushing. This area you need to be careful in because it can generate a lot of heat which will melt the plastic. Here we're using a, a 3M polishing pad. This is much safer than the traditional holding it with your hands and you also don't get operator fatigue. This is a 60 degree threading tool guide. There's also a 45 tool guide as well. Okay, this guy here is a guide for grinding, depending on which one. This is a 60, this is a 45 on the end. Our students or my students have to grind a 45 and a 60 degree. So basically this has everything they need to be able to grind a perfect threading tool. So first of all, you have this hole here it says, oh, I'm supposed to be using 3 8 So if the tool goes in, the tool is 3 8 Second of all, if you block your tool up, the hardest part about uh, making a, a tool is putting the 60 degree in the center. So if I block this up, turn this over 180 degrees, push it up to here, flip it over, and I can scribe my angle inside of here. Then when I'm grinding, I can push it up against here and fit it in, it has the angles and the center angle. And then basically the exact same thing about a 45. I've gotten into a lot of flack on the internet from, the, from making this. Uh, it makes my students' job a lot easier. It's not for tradesmen or people who are already certified. These are people that don't know how to sharpen tools. It really helps them out. In this video clip, I've already blacked up the tool bit and I'm laying out the back using the scribe lines. And this is an example of what it looks like, how it's perfectly on center. In this video clip, I'm demonstrating how you can fit your tool. This concludes part one. Don't forget, all of the STL files will have links in the description below. And as always, if you got any value out of this, please like and subscribe. It's free, and it'll help me out. Thanks, and have a good night.